Hello, gentle viewers. This is Av Guardian welcoming you back to Out of the Park Baseball 24 with the Oakland Athletics. In our previous episode, we made quite the jump. We went from a paltry 65 and 97 record and ended up with a 94 and 68 record, making the playoffs and even uh, earning ourselves a first round buy. We've got work to do, though, because we didn't win the World Series. In fact, we didn't even make it past the Division Series. So there's still plenty of work to be done. And we begin by looking at the salary arbitration numbers. So, I'm not going to offer any of you fuckers the one-time compensation. That would be beyond stupid. Um, I do want to offer some minor league extensions if... Oh, you won't take it because you, yeah. But you might. Tyler Wade. Uh, okay, so that's that dealt with. Next thing. Arbitration. Jorge Mateo still offers a ton of value to me as an ultra utility guy. And I think that's worth a cool four million. It's not worth billions and billions, but it's a good amount, and I am happy to oblige. 4.3 million, done. Tyler McGill had a wonderful season until the playoffs, where he pitched very poorly when we needed him to be his very best. I think it's way too early to give up on him, so I do believe that $2.8 million is a reasonable sum to pay him. I'm not giving you the closer role. That's not how this works. But I will give you the money you're asking for. Okay. That's two signings down. Paul Blackburn. Mr. Blackburn is not worth nearly $6 million. He just isn't. At his very, very best, he's tolerable, but I can get somebody of his skill level for cheaper. So I think trading Paul Blackburn makes a lot of sense. Let's check out the prospect patch. All right, so we're going to go up to the top here and we're going to start looking at the different offers that are being offered to us. Catcher, I'm pretty happy about. I don't really think we need a catcher. So one option here is Miguel Hernandez. Mr. Hernandez is a very talented in middle infielder with less than thrilling offensive capabilities. He's a utility guy. I don't even know why he's worth a 50, but that's one possibility. Jose Lopez certainly offers some intriguing relief possibilities, and I think we're going to take them. I do think Jose Lopez makes a lot of sense uh, for the club. I'm not going to overthink it. Done. Welcome aboard, Jose Lopez. He's absolutely not untouchable. I wonder if I can get him to throw on another prospect. I probably can't, but I'd like to at least try. Like, Adiel Amador seems like it should be somebody I should be able to get, but maybe, yeah, you don't want to do that. That's fair. That's fair. Andres Shaparo, they'd probably part with. I just don't know that I want him. Yeah, I'm not going to overthink it, so I'm just going to make this trade. It's as much about getting rid of the arbitration as it is about adding a talented contributor, although it is that, too, uh, for certain. Um, Dermis Garcia, you are off the 40, man. You have been banished to the non-40-man world. Okay, so that's that dealt with. All the arbitration has been addressed. 
Do we want to bring back Cobb, Paxton, or Trinan? Trinan is absolutely not. He was very productive, but he's already losing heat off his asphalt. I'm not going to go after him again. Cobb, I mean, if he'd come back for like a couple million, I'd think about it. But no, he is, he doesn't like Mark Kotze. And Paxton wants to get paid quite a bit of money. I'm not paying a premium price for a pitcher that's already 36. And again, losing velocity. John Brebbia, I wouldn't mind bringing him back. But again, not at a, like, a big price. I don't think this makes sense to me. I don't think it makes sense. And Frankie Montas also wants too much. I'd rather keep the twenty-six million, to be honest with you, and try to use it to acquire some quality pieces. Um, what do we want? What is our heart's desire at the moment? We've got a bunch of outfielders that are all roughly the same talent level with roughly the same skills. Very few of whom impress. So a big time outfielder would be a great fit for the club, especially with somebody who has reliable power. I feel pretty good about our infield. Um, although Vientos certainly isn't a brilliant third baseman, uh, I think he at least has the capability to be a good enough one until we can find a better one. I'm happy with Alan at shortstop, happy with Angelus at second, and Hernaiz is rapidly improving, and if he can put a little bit more skill in his second base play, I think he's got a good deal there. Tyler Soderstrom might be the key to our offensive success. Uh, very happy with him. Rest of the offense, I mean, Langoliers has a lot of potential, but I am very concerned about the fact he only has power as a skill. He probably won't age super well, so something to keep an eye on. I don't really need three catchers. That may be a way to free up a position player spot if I need to. Cameron Misner is the one player that he's not quite untouchable, but he's really very good and probably has a great chance of winning Rookie of the Year. So there's a real attraction to keeping him around. Not so much that I'm willing to immediately go for a long-term demand. If I did, like, say, five years. I mean, heck, if he take five years like this, I'd be over the moon. He would obviously be pretty unhappy about that. It's because it's an arbitration, I can't click on the button. Oh, there we go. Ooh, no thank you. No thank you. Okay. Do we have any more premium prospects in the may minors? We do. Um, some combination of Paul Skeens and Ryan Cusick can probably get meaningful innings next year. Possibly both. Possibly not. So the next job here is to start identifying people that aren't going to be part of the team, like Kyle Mueller, and get them off of the 38-man roster so that I then have more options later on. Okay. Let's go ahead and simulate up to... Oh, we need coaches, don't we? We do need coaches. I forgot. Mike Farmer is a really good coach. Interesting. Jose Vicente is more properly like a good manager, but for right now, I'll promote him up to the hitting coach and... Oh, he wouldn't take that. It's actually a, a cross league. Uh, it wouldn't be a promotion for him. Give me coach ratings. No, thank you. I just want to know if he's a good coach. Why are you being weird? I don't know. 
Can you teach pitching and come real cheap? Hi, Dave Daniels. Hi there, Alvarez. You're a really cool dude. I'd like you to be my pitching coach. And if you don't want to, I guess I understand. Scott Chambers. Oh, that's enough of my singing. Um, let's get some real good quality coaches here. Why are you being bizarre? Why don't just list everybody in the correct order? I don't know. I love Francis Arias. The chances of him accepting the contract seem pretty remote, but I'd love to try. Okay. Let's advance some time and see what kind of contract offers people accept or don't accept. Oh, no. Anyway. Wow, really? I thought Arias would tell me to get fucked. That's really encouraging. And here goes Kyle Mueller. Enjoy him. Uh, he's not very good. And I'd rather get rid of him earlier. Mateo and Wade both take new contracts. That's good news. And I think that's all my coaching offers signed. So we've got some really talented young coaches ready for some big roles as time progresses. McGill signed his one year deal. Of course he did. Somebody designated for assignment. Oh, Dermis Garcia has cleared waivers as he might. As he might. Hey, Estuary Ruiz ended up with a gold glove. That's pretty cool, actually. Um, what you got? Buddy Kennedy is not that good, but I'm intrigued to see the people want Ruiz. Um, I know he just won a gold glove. Understood. And he's pretty fast, too. But he's not that great an offensive player. And he's not going to get a whole lot better, either. He might get on base a bit. He might hit some du doubles. I'll definitely be watching to see who, if anybody considers assigning there. I got Reliever of the Year and a Silver Slugger. Interesting that Pell Use is the one who won it, but he had a great year, so I'm not complaining. Uh, who did get those a Silver Slugger? Oh, Brian Reynolds. Interesting. Okay. Uh, the Dodgers would like to give me Miguel Vargas. Now, Mr. Vargas is a pretty talented player. He's a good offensive piece. There's a lot to like about him. Where would he play right now? I'd probably put him in a corner outfield spot. If I'm honest with you. I'm going to see if I can keep her nice. This deal I will make. I will happily, happily make this deal. If the Dodgers are willing to, to meet me halfway there.
How close are we to getting Rookie of the Year, though? I frankly don't know how Norm Cash got, or Kevin Cash got it when I deserved it, but whatever. He only finished third. How good was Sagesi? Really good, actually. That's fair. He was actually a really, really great player. So... An MVP for Michael Harris II and for Jordan Alvarez. Wait, Shohei Otani's on the Cardinals? What the fuck? Oh, that's who he signed with in free agency. Damn. Holy smokes. Okay. Let's go up to free agency filings and see... Okay, you're very, very close to accepting it. But I'm not going to give you an elite player for him. But I would give you, like, a mid-level prospect. How about Max Muncie? Because Vargas is basically what Muncie might be in a couple of years. Submit offer. Let's see if, if that gets you hot and bothered. Almost. I'm still having to give you somebody else that's really talented. So I'm going to remove Muncie, and I'm going to go ahead and add in Ramiel Tapia. Yeah, this is just too good a deal. I'm not going to overthink it. Miguel Vargas gives us a player who's really, really good and can play both outfield positions with some level of skill. And I can still use him in a middle infield spot if I need to. Plus, he gives us some secondary power, and that's a really valuable thing to have. Um, that just cleared up a lot of our outfield log jam. And Vargas seems like a really good player. So I'm very happy about that trade. I think that was the right move at the right time. Okay, so international free agents. Speaking of international stuff... Um... Oh, it's not under international, it's under scouting. Yeah, go ahead and run the practice, please. Interesting, okay. So December I'll be able to run it again if I want more details. And we're not positive about the accuracy either, so I'm thinking there's a certain level of doing it again would be quite valuable to me. Um, let's check on free agents. How much money do I have to spend? I have... Quite a bit of money for short-term contracts, considerably less for long-term. So let's get at it. What positions do we need to fill? I need, um, I've used an upgrade at, wait, you're benching the other guy to play Vargas at third? I don't know why, uh, whatever. Uh, we need starting pitching. I would love to have a dedicated DH and one more quality outfielder. That's Those are the three positions I'm targeting. I'll take anybody who seems like they're a really great value, but that's kind of what I'm leaning towards. Let's look at all players. 
Looking for that value. Jalen Beats seems like a pretty good value. On the other hand, I'm not sure I need another reliever. What am I looking at for relief talent? Pitching ratings. All relievers. He could definitely replace Smith or Ginn, potentially. Maybe. And he is quite inexpensive. Um, I'd like to offer Chad Green a minor league contract. I'm not giving you an option, though. Uh, if it's going to cost me uh, $1.7 million, I might as well bring back like Frankie Montas for $1.7 million. I'll give him a one-year deal of $1.7 million. I'll even give him a chance to make the rotation. That seems reasonable to me. Let's look at starters, though. I'd love to get a really talented starter that I could trust. <sighs> Jose Quintana seems like a pretty bad deal, all things considered. I don't want to give up a draft pick for him. Aaron Savali certainly isn't a thrilling pitcher, but he's not the worst either. This is not a great pitching class, so let's look at offense. Let's see if there's anything good on the table here. Okay, let's pause for a second and imagine in our heart of hearts what it looked like to have Juan Soto on the team. Okay, that's done. Oh, that's not happening. I'm going to try just because it would be funny, but you're going to tell me to get fucked because I'm not going to give you the money that you're looking for. No, I love Juan Soto. He is not worth that much money. Um, Someone else can give him that big contract because it's not going to be coming from me. Um, okay. If I didn't have Brian Reynolds, I would very strongly consider that, but I do have Brian Reynolds, so I'm not going to bother. Austin Meadows is a good all-around outfielder. I could see bringing him in, potentially. I think there's there's a lot to him and his game. Let's go ahead and offer him a contract. A four-year deal is a bigger commitment than I want to give him right now. But I would be willing to give him a one-year deal and just see how this works out. Okay, he wants a bigger contract. I don't think he's worth it. Not when there's cheaper options to be had that are almost as good. Why is Tony Kemp? Oh, because you're basically a utility guy at this point in your career. Pass. Jan Gomez, I mean, if I needed another catcher, which I don't, I'd consider it. Um... Like, there's a lot of players who are all in roughly the same level here. What am I looking for most? What offensively does this team lack? In just raw abilities. I got a good number of contact guys. I don't have a ton of power. Like, a good power-hitting corner outfielder... 
could be real good. Does such a thing exist in this free agent class? It's really unfortunate that the thing that we need most is the thing that we can't have, which is a really good pitcher. I may take another look here in a second, but I want to look at power potential here. Braylon Bishop is really cheap. I will happily bring you along, Mr. Bishop. Easy pick. Um, what else might we like? Man, Soto is so freaking good. But he would basically assassinate my my long term financial stability. Do I care? I don't know that I do care. Like, here's the thing. Soto drives ticket prices. Soto is a great hitter. Like, top to bottom. He's not an amazing outfielder. Fair. Maybe that's a reason not to get him. Mm. The biggest splash I could make is bringing in Juan Soto. That's not disputable. He would instantly give us a lot more credibility offensively. However, he would also basically completely fuck my financial flexibility. And I can't be signing players to giant contracts like this, no matter how amazing they are. The problem, the question isn't, do you want Juan Soto? The question is, can you afford Juan Soto? Um... Hey, Oscar Hernandez would be an okay choice. What is your deal? Eh. Oh, I want batting ratings. I want their power right now, not what it could be. I mean, Teoscar Hernandez would be a reasonably good choice, but I do think we need pitching. Right now, our rotation includes three relievers. That ain't good. Um, I need... I need two horses, I think. If I can get two quality pitchers, then we can have a chat. We can absolutely have a chat. All right. So the, the cheapest option is maybe not the best option. Let's talk about Andrew Heaney. Hmm... That movement is an issue. Glass now is really, really good, but I'm not sure it's worth the premium free agent price and the premium draft pick I'd be coughing up. So right now, I'm picking 30th. And I didn't get any extra picks, which is fun, I guess. Man. I feel like Glass now is a classic trap pitcher, where it's a really thin class, and I'm being tempted to sign a pitcher for probably better than he's worth. It doesn't fill me with a lot of confidence, despite how good a pitcher he seems to be, to bring him in. Um, on the other hand, though...
here's my counter offer. Five year deal with two team op with a team option in year four. How does that work for you? You'll we'll discuss it. Okay. Great. That's my long shot. That's my long shot. I also need a really reliable pitcher to just fill in and not make me use a reliever in the bullpen. What is Mitch Keller's deal? Decent stuff and movement, not great control, decent velocity. Fastle slider sinker all work pretty well. Uh, I will offer Mr. Mitch Keller a contract. Like, any picture I'm getting is going to be flawed. That's just the nature of the pieces available to me at this time. Mr. Jack Flaherty. Let's search by pitching ratings, and let's search by stuff. And, yeah, Glasnow is clearly the best pitcher on the market. Is there any other values to be found? Aaron Savali's got decent stuff in control. Um, Nick Martinez would be a decent choice as well. He wants more money, though, so we'd be paying a higher premium for a better pitcher. Um, hmm. Samuel Valerio, I will happily offer you a minor league contract uh, if you want one. Because all I have to do is improve your control a little bit, and you're going to be a really great pitcher. Okay, let's look now at outfielders. And I'm looking for power, and I'm not looking for Juan Soto. I keep coming back to Teoscar Hernandez. He's a decent corner guy with decent power and decent contact. I might be able to get a decent return for him, but I also might not. Because he doesn't have those secondary offensive skills to make him a bit more reliable. In contrast, say, to a Jordan Luplow who at least has that really good discipline to, to ride on. Hmm. Uh, all players, please. Yo Hal Pozo is a really good player. Okay, so right now you're playing Will Brennan in the corner over Vientos. Um, what if I force you to use him at third? No, maybe that's not a good idea. What if I let you go to AAA and just spend a year improving and then brought you back when there might be a bit less of a log jam? I could use a more well-rounded bench. Now, part of that is going to come from Mr. Um, what's his face when he returns? Uh, Jorge Mateo. Um, he is going to be a really good bench piece to help us out there. I wouldn't mind taking on an interesting... Oh, God, none of my position players are over 30. Only one of them is even close to 30. Oh, dear. Okay. Hmm. We do need an outfielder. 
that is a certainty. And none of the guys I have in my system really seem like they're ready to even get regular playing. But maybe Clark Elliott. Like, Elliott's a good defender who's kind of a good hitter, but I'd really like... I mean, Alan Roden can also kind of be that guy. Damn it, game. Why do you have to be like this? Why do you have to give me needs that I can't fill? Damn and blast. Um... Okay, definitely want an outfielder. Just get Juan Soto, five head. A record team's financial future for decades. Um, Adam Duvall. You want to start and you want $12 million. I don't think that's worth it. You want to start also? Um, hmm. I bet Michael Conforto wants to start. He's really cheap, though. Let's offer Mr. Conforto a contract. And let's maybe get one really good reliever, if there is one. Just an absolute stuff king. You can also throw strikes. I mean, that would be Liam Hendricks. Or Devin Williams, if I don't mind. Devin Williams probably wants so much money, though. Eh. Five million for one reliever doesn't seem like a good investment, in my opinion. Just get Jalen Beeks for like two million. I think that's a better choice. And I'll offer you a contract as well. I'm not making you the closer though. You can. Get... I'm not giving you. Yeah, you're not going to be a closer. Uh, cease thy complaining, mortal. Because that ain't going to happen. Jordan Hicks is also really attractive. Um, both because he could kind of be a starter in an emergency, but also because he's got a really nice mix of pitches. And I know his control isn't amazing, but the rest of his tools make him seem like he could be interesting. I ain't paying you $6 million. Uh, no thank you. AJ Minter would be a really good pick. He's also really expensive. It's almost like the game knows to to make people pay lots of money for good pitching, which I personally find disgusting, but and it is what it is. I just don't see this, the point in spending money just to make money when I could instead invest that money into scouting or player development. So let's do that. Um, let's increase this by $5 million. Uh, let's make it even $15 million. There we go. And let's go to player development. And let's bump this up to at least the baseline. Well, let's make it 16 million. There we go. Uh, let's actually not make it 16 million because I do want at least a chance to... Uh, I'm going to reduce my draft budget. And I'm going to increase my budget here. There we go. All right. Let's sim forward and see how many people accept our contracts. Hogan Harris just sucks. I think I'm just going to cut him. Like, there's really very little talent to consider. Mateo is different. Him, not so much. Um, Hall of Fame voting begins. Who? 
Who is worthy? Okay, we only have 15 spots. I'll vote for Beltran and Adrian Beltre. Gotta give some love to Bartolo Colon, of course. No, no, no. I will go for King Felix. I love me some Corey Kluber. Uh, you know that's true, so I will consider that as well. Um, A-Rod should have made it already. That's a non... Yeah. As should CC and Ichiro. I will vote for Joey Votto. I don't think he's a guarantee by any stretch of the imagination, but I will vote for him all the same. I'll also vote for Adam Wainwright. This is just a lot of really samey kind of players, most of whom don't do much for me. Uh, I'll vote for all these catchers here and Joe Maurer. I love me some Nelson Cruz. He's a good dude. I guess I'll for Robinson Cano because I personally don't give two shits about PDEs. Performance enhancing drugs. PDEs. I don't know why I said PDEs. But yeah, we'll do that. Boom. There's my ballot. Let's go. A trade proposal. You would give me Ty France. I don't need a first baseman, though, is the thing. Braylon Bishop has signed into our system, which is lovely news. And we're going to lose a third round draft pick. I'm genuinely shocked that Glasnow signed with me so easily. But I am happy to have a picture of his caliber on our roster. So this now gives me a proper frontline starter. And now we can think about calling up other pitchers to get them a bit more practice he's also a great mentor so i think that's a home run of a of a pick there um austin meadows still wants some consideration yeah i can't afford you now Now, my financial situation might improve dramatically if and when Mr. Brian Reynolds uh, rejects uh, the offer that he has to stick around. So, something to consider there, too. Yeah, if Frankie Montas on somewhere else, he just does, and I can't really do anything about that. What is it about Jared fucking Walsh that the Angels think is the only player I've ever sought in my entire life? Like, seriously, back the hell off. I don't want his stupid jerk face. Um, I don't actually know that he's a stupid jerk, but he seems like one because they keep pushing him on me. 
All right. So let's go ahead and offer Mr. Ryan Cusick a 40-man spot so I don't lose him in the Rule 5. Someone might take Braylon Bishop from me. I accept that consequence, but I don't think it's very likely. He's the only player that I really think is worth going out of my way to keep. Um, I definitely want to save some room so I can maybe go after a Rule 5 pick or two if they feel like they would fit. Ryan Mountcastle for my dude. Disagree. All right. So one possibility I'm already staring dead in the face is Mr. Ron Marinaccio. He's got really good movement, good stuff, and a great pitch mix. He's a borderline starter. I don't know that I'd let him start, but I do think I would pick him off of the Rule 5 draft. All players. Jack Brannigan? Is that Zap's cousin? No, he's a uh, not very good player is what he is. Tyler Back Black, the Russian Rutzer, also known as Seth Rollins. Wild. There's a lot of players here who might be decent. Um, what are we looking at in terms of batting ratings and power? Jorge Soler? Kevin Alcantara is on the fucking Rule 5 list? I will happily add you to my roster as well, Mr. Alcantara, and I will put you in a corner and let you See what you can do. Do I want anybody else here? I mean, there's Eberto, Eriberto Hernandez, but... No, I've already got quite a few positions uh, full. I don't want to get too short-sighted, so I'm going to go ahead and just complete the draft as is. Oh, it is a new month. Can I get you, my friends, to run another practice to try to get some more accuracy on them? I absolutely have no desire for Josh Bell. I don't know what it is about Soderstrom where people are like, he's a garbage first baseman. I think he's an incredible first baseman, and I have no desire to replace him at this point in his young career. Um, Keller and Conforto both signed. Okay. <sighs> Rubio Angeles almost won a fucking batting title, which is pretty cool. Pretty, pretty cool. I wonder if Juan Soto has been signed yet or if people are still waiting on him.
Wow. Someone has indeed signed the legendary Mr. Juan Soto. Who ended up with him? The Reds are paying him a lot of money. Hey, guys, I, I respect your decision, uh, even if I don't fully understand it. Oh, you don't like... Who's the guy you consistently told me that you don't really like? You didn't like Pintor or Garza. Let's remove them both from my list. And then let's go to the international free agent pool. International. Home. Front office. Scouting. Weep. Um, the heck are they? Is it under prospect pipeline? What's oh, under free agents and then international amateurs? And then I can add interest in a couple more players. Let me get Sandoval and Flores invited. And then we're going to go to the scout. And... Run practice. Juan Camejo is, I think, the early winner in terms of what I'd like to spend my money on, but we'll see who's available. Might be nobody. Buddy Kennedy. No, I, I, I don't want him. I cannot fathom what it is about my team that people are like, you know what you want, a first baseman. I really don't. I'm more than content to let Soderstrom be a pretty solid first baseman. Yeah. Uh, who made the Hall of Fame? Just Robinson Cano. This is kind of realistic that I don't see any scenario in which Adrian Beltre has to wait this long. He'll go in on the first ballot. It's almost mandatory. Um, so I can spend up to 5.9 million this year. Cool. Mr. Juan Camejo, I would like to offer you $2 million because I believe in you. I'd also like to offer Mr. Edgar Delgado some cash. Again, $2 million. And then last but certainly not least... I think he's a really interesting choice because he's A, quite cheap, so I could probably even get four players if I can get him to sign for a million. Uh, let's make it one million dollar reduce. 
And this gives me basically 920 grand left. And I'm going to invest it in Alberto Flores. I'm just trying to get under the cap, but offer you the most money that I can. There we go. Let me simulate one day and see if anybody gets back to me. Okay. So Ramirez, Flores, Ramirez is already signed. Flores probably will and Delgado's thinking about it. Kamejo, I can't afford any more, I don't think. I don't think I can offer you any more than I've already given you. I can give you 2.2 million. That is the... I can give you 2 million exactly. So that's the only thing I can offer you. If you choose not to sign with me, that's your own choice. Yeah, I will offer you the four million. I'd rather have you because the other guy's being a little bitch. Uh, Delgado is getting even more from the Mariners. Let me go back to Camejo and see if I can't swoop in here and get you for four million. I will happily force people to give you lots and lots of cash uh, if it means I get a chance to have him. So Jorge Ramirez and Flores have both signed. Flores might be a sneaky good pick because he's a really developed pitcher that I think is going to put a lot of heat on his fastball. So I'm really excited to see what we can make out of him. And Jorge Ramirez is just a really solid player that's probably not a third baseman, uh, but we can find a position for him, potentially. Okay, I wonder if he will sign with me. We got Kamejo. Brilliant. You have cut my budget, but raised my team budget, so I have some money to spend if I need to. Uh, Frankie Montas has gone to the Braves for the princely sum of a minor league contract. That's really funny. Beeks also went to Atlanta. Edgar Delgado ended up going to Washington, but I did get Kamejo. So we've got a lot of really good young pitching available in the system that we didn't have before. Neat. If Brian Reynolds opts out, I will obviously give him a qualifying offer, and I will happily take the draft pick if that's what's needed, if that's the best choice. Um, okay. Okay. I have 2112 by Rush stuck in my head, and it's not coming out. Wow. You just fucking decided, yeah, Juan Camejo is going right to the big. It's going right to the minor leagues. Hey, I'm all for it. If he can make it work, I will happily see him do it. Um, that's really interesting to me. They just, like, leaps ahead, but I'm here for it. Okay, Skeens, Muncy, Susak, Conforto, Cummings, Elliot, Rooker.
I think that's it. I think that gives me a very, very robust set of options here. You're still putting a reliever in the fucking rotation. Like, he wouldn't be a terrible starter, but I'm not convinced he's a, the best choice, but okay. I'm going to trust your judgment. Uh, that's what I pay you the big bucks for, Mark Kotze, but you better be right. Okay, so currently it looks like the plans have an outfield of Reynolds, Brennan, and Misner. Vargas playing at first, Vientos playing at third, and Soderstrom occasionally DHing or Michael Conforto DHing. Interesting. I think you're really need to see here. No, this is just going to be about getting lots of different people, lots of different opportunities, and seeing where we end up in just a few weeks. Like, I don't think we're going to win 90-plus games again, but we could. And I think it's arguable that we have a much better starting pitching staff than we did last season. I could be wrong, but I don't think that I am. Uh, Mitch Keller is getting better. Shea Langoliers is improving his speed. Not necessarily what I want him to work on in spring training, but I guess whatever makes him happy. Uh, is fine with me. Is a okay. That is some fucking bullshit game. If you just took my absolutely amazing pitcher and wrecked his career, I will be extremely sad. How did you tear your fucking UCL already? Uh, fine. Fine. Also, thank you for moving the thing. It's like, why are you putting him in the minors? You could put him on the IL instead. Um, I appreciate that I can just send people to the minors without you questioning me. It makes me feel good. Wow, a 0-0 tie game with the Mariners. That's pretty wild. Okay. Play your development. Okay. All right, let us now get down to the appropriate number of players. Um, Fitz to the Miners, Howard to the Miners, Jackson to the Miners, Sears to the Miners, what am I looking at? 16 pitchers. We at most want 13. Vasquez, super hard to the minors. Guys, I really don't think Freddie Tarnock is all that amazing, but maybe it's just something about him that I'm not quite grasping. He's out of options, and I don't want to lose him uh, for nothing, so I will keep him for now. Uh, Jose Lopez is going to go to the minors. As is Ryan Kusick. I know 13 pitchers. 13 still seems like too much to me, to be honest with you, but that's okay. I am willing to see what happens with this particular setup. So the rest of your position players. Susak starts in the minors. That's the easiest choice I'm going to make all spring training. I think we trade Connor Wong. 
I think his value is mostly because he can play so many different positions, but I don't think it's very smart to keep him around and basically block a spot on the roster. So let's see what manner of prospect I might be able to acquire. Literally nothing? Uh, okay. Let's, let's, let's heat it up a bit. Let's add in other positions and see what we got. Hey, if I'm willing to eat a shitty contract, I can get some decent stuff. I don't mind Michael Turner. I think Michael Turner would be a reasonable get. Kyle Kasser. Rengifo, always an amazing name. Hmm. Nick Gordon. I do like his versatility a lot, actually. Yeah, let's grab Nick Gordon. And, uh, and we can chuck him onto the roster. Or is it just made my job harder, not easier? But that's okay. It's all right. See all these lovely first basemen? My Ner Leagues. All three of you. Right to the minors. Um, Jorge Mateo is still out for a week. So I'm not going to put him on the IL yet. I do think that his time on the roster is somewhat um is somewhat numbered because i think max muncie is probably ready for a bigger role roden is just not as good as conforto conforto's got that good quality power that the chicks go crazy for uh clark elliott can go to the miners So the question is, do we keep Vientos? No, we're going to send down Hernais. I'd rather have Gordon right now and let Hernais continue to develop his game in, in AAA. I think that's very smart. Oh, shit, it's 26 players, isn't it? It is 26. Cole Cummings can go to the minors. I'm carrying too many infielders. Between Gordon Mateo and Vientos and Vargas, that's too many infielders. Vientos goes to the minors. And now we're in good shape. The reason I'm not keeping him on the Major League roster is he didn't hit that well and didn't have a ton of time in AAA. So I want him to get some a little bit more time in AAA and then probably end up bringing him back. Uh, cool. Here's the opening day roster. Uh, do yo Fang. Mark Kotze. I don't love Miguel Vargas at third base, I'm going to be honest with you, but I don't hate it either. And he's at least better than the other guy, and he looks like he's a good all-around hitter. This giant role for Will Brennan is slightly confusing. I'm not necessarily opposed to it. But anyway. Uh, cool. I don't like you bearing Angelis, though. Can't I force him to play a second? Like, I get why you're doing what you're doing. And it's probably not fair to ask Mr. Angeles here to be a 300 hitter again. But Jorge Mateo probably won't even be that. He's just a really good second baseman, and there's nothing wrong with that, but I just don't see him being a starter over Angeles. So I'm going to get involved. I'm going to force you to play him at second base. 
I'm gonna overrule you and be like, hey fucker, play him at second. I get it. I get that Mateo is really good defensively, and that's what freaking stuff is for. That's why we have this amazing thing called a bench. Now, Pozo does concern me that he's playing him so much. Because I want Pozo to be available to be a backup catcher, too. Um, but you're using Soder's from as the backup catcher, which I don't love, but I will accept. Really? This is your idea? I mean, I'm not going to argue with you. You're the manager, and if I don't like you, I can fire your ass, but... Um, let us now... Um, did any rookies make the roster? Technically, Michael Conforto needs a 40, a 38-man spot. Guys, I'm going to keep calling it the 40-man. I apologize. I don't have the, the cleverness to not call it that. Kevin Alcantara could be a really nice pickup by us. I really like him as a Rule 5 pick. Okay, my friends, my comrades, let us advance to the day of opening and bask in the glory of the new look Oakland Athletics. Want me to get a winning season? Let's check out our owner goals before we go any farther and figure out if there's any that we just don't think are reasonable. I can discuss this. I think the fact is that the players that I would most likely be promoting is injured. I'm going to ask. I don't like the idea of increasing my profit because I don't think we're going to earn a profit. I'm going to hit decline. Prove my international amateur fines. That I will accept. Oh, basically it's the same thing, but we need to put them in the majors. I see. All right, friends, let us consider what we have done this offseason. Miguel Vargas was probably the biggest upgrade offensively this season. Um, if we check out what we gave up, we gave up a fair bit, but we gave up players that didn't have that, that top tier level that a player like a Miguel Vargas does. Ruiz, Tapia, and Loser McGee here are all fine players in their own way, but they're not as good as Vargas, and this also freed up spots for us to be more creative. Will Brennan is going to be our starting right fielder. I have mixed feelings about that. I'm not convinced he's going to be that sensational, but I'm willing to give him an opportunity. Plus, that's an incredible Twitter name, Silly Willy 18 I love it. Brian Reynolds is back. Um, I really hope he opts out. But I don't think he will. Because here's the thing. There's nothing about Brian Reynolds that's going to convince people that he deserves to make $40 million a year. There just isn't. And if he's not going to make a raise, then he's going to stay with Oakland and take the devil he knows or risk getting less. So... I don't think he's going to opt out. It'd be cool if he did, but I don't think it's very likely. Pozo being our full-time DH is interesting. And I'm kind of interested to see how he does. Uh, Cameron Misner is a great talent and I think a good player as well. Angelus is back. Allen is back. Langoliers is back. Our pitching staff does look quite different. Uh, Tyler Glass now. We have a proper ace now. 
Um, for a relatively affordable contract, too. Um, plus, he's from the area. I think Santa Clarita is somewhat close to Oakland, so that's a cool move for him. Ariel Miranda, who we picked up from Atlanta, is a very good pitcher when he's not playing against a team as good as Tampa. Our old friend Shintaro Fujami, Fujinami. Um, important fact here. He ain't coming back. I might give him a one-year arbitration deal, but he's already making way too much money, in my opinion. And I don't think he's worth it. I don't. I don't think he's that great. Uh, Colin Palouse as a starter is going to be interesting. I am somewhat concerned, but I'm willing to give him a go at it. I do think he's earned the opportunity. I do think he has some very obvious issues, specifically the fact that his third pitch is kind of crappy and he doesn't have a ton of stamina, but I'm going to give him that chance. And then we brought in former friend from Pittsburgh, Mitch Keller, to be in our fifth starter spot. Um, the bullpen is quite similar, except for Marinaccio, who we got in the Rule 5 draft, and Freddie Tarnock getting an opportunity through the time old tradition of I'm out of options. So, that's where we are, friends. Are we a better team? I think we are. I do think we are. Um, you need lots, as much time as possible to improve in the international complexes before I call you up. Okay. Um, losing Paul Skeen for the season is really rough. Um, I was really hoping to give him a chance to make the rotation this year. And we didn't even get to see him pitch all that much. So, we shall see, my friends. Um, any extensions want to offer for you in the episode? I could offer Iglesias an extension. I don't think he'd take it, and I don't think I could afford it if he did. Yeah, he wants a giant raise, and I'm not going to be the one to give it to him. A small raise for Mitch Keller is tempting, but I want to see what he brings to the table before I commit money to him. Um, there's a lot of players whose contracts are about to go up quite high. Um, I'm just not convinced I want to invest heavily in Miguel Vargas until I can see what he can do in Oakland over a full season and see what that ends up being. Nick Allen seems to have the best chance of staying with the A's for a while. I think if I go for cost certainty with anybody, it'll probably be Nick Allen. Either him or um, fucker McGee. What's his name? Blah, Misner. I might be able to get Misner for cheap. I feel like, say, a five year deal. What is your long term demand? That only buys me one year of free agency. And there is a rip. <laughs> All this with one year free agency. Now keep in mind. So remember, eight million is about the number we're looking for. Will he be with at least one win in his eight year season? I think that's pretty likely. I think we're going to make this offer. Oh, you will not approve the offer because I have. Too much money coming up here. Interesting. Anyway, friends, that's going to conclude today's episode. Um, I hope you enjoy the episode. I hope you're enjoying the series thus far. Um, please remember to like the video if you haven't already, and consider commenting and subscribing. 
Until next time, my friends, this has been Avgardian. Thank you for watching, and I bid you good day.